Hi, my name is uh, Jon. In this tutorial we will learn how to use the new uh, shadow mapping introduced in Visartist 3.8. This new shadow approach uses so-called cascaded shadow maps to fight one of the common problems of shadow mapping, the resolution of the shadow map. For you to understand why this is a problem, let me explain in short how shadow mapping works. Shadow mapping is a two-pass technique. In the first rendering pass, the scene is drawn from the perspective of the light source and depth values are stored in a texture. Afterwards, the scene is rendered from the camera perspective and each pixel's distance from the light source is compared to the value in the texture. More often than not, light and camera will be rather far away from each other and objects close to the camera might occupy only a few pixels in the shadow map, but a lot more on the final image. In other words, many pixels close to the camera will be checked against the same pixel in the shadow map. This results in aliasing and shadows looking boxy. Cascaded shadow maps try to get more resolution near the camera and less far away by using more than one shadow map. Now let's see how this can be activated in Visartist. Go to light and select a light source that should cast a shadow. More than one caster is possible, but this comes with a noticeable performance hit for every additional shadow casting light. After selecting the light, on the property panel click the button that says shadow. We will ignore the parameters next to it for now, because at the moment we still don't see any shadows in our scene. This is because we haven't assigned any shadow casters or receivers yet. To do this we use the shadow caster and receiver plugins you might remember from the old shadow approach. Just drop the plugins on a container and it and all its children will take the respective role. For this tutorial we will just put them on the root container of our scene. So under built-ins container plugins we can find these plugins and drop them on our container. The layer parameters correspond to light sources. So you can have two lights cast shadows but containers could only cast or receive shadows from one of the light sources. As already mentioned, the plugins are the same as for the stencil shadow approach. If for some reason you want or need to switch back to this old version, you can do this under Scene Settings, Shadows. There you can switch between stencil and shadow map. Now let's go back to the light settings and check the shadow parameters. First of all, there is the intensity. This controls the alpha value of the shadow, simply said it makes the shadow darker. The second one is the smoothness. Basically all it does is make shadows smoother the further away a receiver is from the caster. The last two parameters controls the distances at which the different shadow maps are effective. If you press the show distances button you can see that the shadow color codes the distances at which different shadow maps are used. Green for the nearest, red for middle and magenta for the farthest. The default values should work just fine most of the time. If for example you scale your scene and move the camera further away to accommodate for that, you might need to update these values. And this is it. All you need to know about shadow mapping in this artist. Thanks for watching. <laughs>